everyone. Welcome to Studio 14. I'm Kim Newcomer with the City of Fort Collins. Thanks for joining us. All right, well, I have a confession. Uh, my garage is a two-car garage, and interestingly, it does not fit any cars in it. And that is because there is so much junk in there that um, it needs probably a spring cleaning 10 times over. And just as I sit here and feel panicky about it, I have a couple folks in the studio that are gonna help me with a solution. So let me introduce them to you. Justin Carter with Paint Genius. Justin, yes. thank you for being here. Hello. And then of course, my two city colleagues, Erin Hangler and Susie Gordon. Um, ladies, thanks for being here as well. Yes. All right, so I have this dilemma. I have a garage full of nonsense. And I have to admit, some of it is things that you can recycle in your, you know, weekly, or excuse me, every couple week pickup. And then other things are a little bit harder. And so now you guys have all partnered together to provide an opportunity for people to recycle some of these hard to recycle things. Erin, tell us a little bit about this Household Hazardous Waste event. Um, well, the Household Hazardous Waste event's a program that the city started um, or reconvened in 2010. And it's a designed to collect uh, household hazardous waste from the community residents to get it out of their home, to get it out of their garages. It helps um, with indoor air quality. If you're going in and um, you have have some product in your house it can emit VOCs and stuff and so we're just trying to get it out um, to dispose of in an environmentally responsible manner so the household hazardous waste event takes place twice a year this year it's June 2nd and September 15th from 9 to 3 it's a very easy drive-through format residents are able to load up their truck uh, their car, whatever amount they have, up to 30 gallons per household, and bring it to our event. You drive through, city staff and volunteers unload the waste, and then it goes to different vendors where um, we try to repurpose it and get it to the most environmentally disposal. Some goes for fuel reblending that helps with alternative heat sources. We've partnered with Justin. He's able to take a lot of our latex and repurpose it, and I'm sure he'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, pesticides, old pesticides that maybe aren't any good or you don't want to use anymore, you've decided. We take all that. So we're really trying to get those materials out of the home that are really toxic and yeah. ca cause harm. Like you, you know you shouldn't put in the trash, but you're not quite sure exactly. what to do with. Exactly. And, and we should mention this is free, because that's of course right. a really yes. important feature. And the reason that the city council decided that this was the approach that we'd start taking a couple of years ago is just to provide really, really a lot of greater uh, accessibility and convenience for citizens. We do have year-round a drop-off site at the Larimer County Household Hazardous right. Waste Facility, but it just makes it awfully easy for people to come to the location which is at the corner of Lake Street and South College okay. is where we it's a parking lot it's on the, the north southeast corner of the uh, school campus it's okay. a um, right across from the um, demonstration gardens right there. yeah the mm -hmm. no northwest corner of Lake and College you enter on Lake it's completely drive through so residents don't even have to get out of their car and, like it, we and said. it goes fast it really yeah. I mean when we had a thousand people over a thousand people over came in September and I think the longest people waited was maybe 10 minutes at the peak height right. of the event. Most Cra people, in all honesty, less than five minutes yeah, that's great. in drive through. Yeah. And we really, again, those toxics, um, this year we're adding, we're really focusing on mercury switches mm -hmm. and anything that has mercury to get it because those can have such detrimental right. effects to your health um, if disposed of improperly and to the environment. So Justin, let's talk about what, do we, what happens once this event takes place. I know that you've partnered with us in the past. Um, your organization not only helps with the event itself, but then helps get rid of this in the right way. Absolutely. Um, you think about one of the most abundant products that we see at these events is paint. <clears throat> you talk about your garage is cluttered. I guarantee there's some paint in it. there somewhere. And f for residents, um, households, a lot of the times they have paint from previous owners. Right. It's not even their bag. Right. So. A lot of people don't know what to do with it. They say, okay, I'm going to use it maybe later. Probably not. Put it in your car. Um, bring all your latex down to this type of event. And we will take it and we will not only reprocess it, but we'll make sure that it ends up on a room, um, on a building, on a house. So we actually close the loop. We take it from events, we reprocess it, and then we apply it to projects. So without getting overly complicated and losing me in your description, when you say reprocess, I mean, what, is that, what does that look like? Basically, you have colors that nobody else wants. 
<laughs> Have you seen my house? Because <laughs> that's very true. So we take the pinks, um, somebody <laughs> is painted in their daughter's room, and we turn it into a color that maybe your neighbor would want to paint a room or the outside of their house, um, or a business owner is, is maybe refreshing the look of their business, or municipalities that are doing right. facility maintenance we can match any color any sheen with the reprocessed paint that's pretty cool yeah and, and, and you know what the weirdest thing is is that yellow paint is what justin loves to find in the collection of yes now why yellow. yellow yellow because it's it's the least powerful color, but it is the color that you use the most of when you're making neutrals, like your favorite America's Killam Beige from Sherman <laughs> Williams. There's a little plug for Sherman Williams. <laughs> um, but th that's the color that you're looking for. Whites and yellows, because the yellows create the warmer neutral colors. Mm, that's so. crazy. Well, I'd like to mention, Justin, it's done quite a bit of quality testing on the paint, and the quality of it is, mm -hmm. in most cases, better and then a lot of, of the uh, medium and lower priced paints that you can buy in the store. And so the quality is a very high quality and the price is reduced than buying a completely virgin new product. Yeah. Absolutely. With the economy in the state that it is, um, home improvement has been a big priority <clears throat> and people are, are price conscientious. They're going to Home Depot and they're looking at cans of paint, maybe twenty, twenty-five dollars, right. um, which is really on the lower end um, for quality of paint. And you can purchase a gallon of recycled paint for twelve to fourteen dollars with um, comparable quality to a twenty-five, thirty-five, forty-dollar gallon of paint. Yeah. Excellent coverage. That's yeah. great. Now, to buy the paint from Justin, you'd have to go down to his um, retail facility right. in Denver. But we have had it uh, used in Fort Collins. The folks at the affordable housing yes. have used it on some of their um, projects. And then we also, our own facilities department, painted a building um, just down the street from City Hall. And it was because we wanted a chance to see how well it performed. And everybody's been really pretty pleased that it, it, it rolls on and paints on very smoothly. and. Yeah. So when we have this kind of event, I mean, how much stuff are we talking about? How much did we collect? Wow. Um, well, in two thousand, outside of lots. <laughs> in 2011, with two events, two, both events combined, we collected over 100,000 pounds of material. Wow. So um, approximately 50% of that material ends up being latex paint. So we're really excited to wow. partner with Justin um, to keep it out of the disposal system to really right. close that loop. Um, but yeah, 100,000 pounds of material last year alone with almost about 1,800 um, different residents visiting us or cars driving through. So we also have people come on bikes and in bike trailers. And so yeah, we really encourage we, all forms of transportation. Yeah, we <laughs> encourage those folks for sure. You know, Susie, I don't know if you have this statistic, but I mean, how as a community, are we doing a good job keeping this stuff out of our waste stream or... Um, you know, there's always room for improvement, I'm sure. But, mm. I mean, do you have some sort of relative sense of the impact that these type of events have? Well, I th it's a little hard to do comparisons. Yeah. With, but with our colleagues along the Front Range, mm -hmm. we've, we've kind of compared notes. And we are collecting a lot more at these events lately in Fort Collins than we've seen in Broomfield or Boulder or Longmont. Um, mm. And it just continues to grow. I think I think people are really conscientious, and I think they're looking for the solution. Uh, you know, again, to put in a plug for Larimer County Household Hazardous right. Waste Facility, it is really a, a world-class place to take your materials. And if you've never been there, you ought to because it's a drop and swap. You can take something that you don't need, a half can of varnish or something like <laughs> of that. Of the bright pink that uh, the just, just pink. called me out. <laughs> and having and then out. take something back like that you could use, like a solvent or a, a right. cleaning product. Um, but again, that, that convenience factor has really made it easy for people people to incorporate it into their Saturday errands, run by, drop off, you know, a bag full, a box full, a cart full, a, 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 you know, Material. sometimes a lot. Right. Household batteries Household are very batteries are, popular. are being accepted and um, CFLs, compact fluorescent oh, wow. light bulbs. Yes. Um, so, you know, it's all it's all good, and, and hopefully you'll get your garage cleared out this year. Oh, so. I need to so badly. It's pathetic. <laughs> So, um, you know, obviously, Justin, we're going to have you here for these events in Fort Collins. I can imagine that you're probably off doing this um, throughout the state in different areas as well. Right. I'm a, I'm a Denverite. Um, and it's I, okay to just confess it. <laughs> <laughs> and we recycle paint all over Colorado as far south as Canyon City. Um, wow. uh, we just actually took a, a, s a Southern Colorado tour 
in through Montrose and Canyon City to pick up paint from Habitat for Humanity Restores. Um, but one thing that I've noticed in, in participating in recycling events all over Colorado is that Fort Collins is, is very progressive. It's, a, it's an event that I enjoy, I look forward to. And we only had the opportunity to participate in the latter, the w one recycling event Back last in year. in September, yes. Yeah. Which we collected about 10,000 pounds of latex paint. This year, we are looking to double that um, in, in both events. So to about 2,000 units or, two, uh, or 20,000 pounds for each event. And, and Fort Collins has really been pushing for, for recycling paint. They've uh, supported the idea of uh, reusing that paint on, on munis uh, municipal facilities. Right. So we're happy to make the trip to, to recycle paint well, there you go. That's the challenge, folks. Yeah. Um, one more time, remind everyone of time, date, place, and where they can find a list of stuff that they can bring. Um, June 2nd, September 15th, from 9 to 3, northwest corner of Lakin College and CSU's parking lot, drive through format, and you can get more information on fcgov.com slash has waste. Wonderful. And with that, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about recycling and uh, conservation here in Fort Collins. Stay with us. Hi everyone, welcome back to Studio 14. I'm Kim Newcomer with the City of Fort Collins. Well, while you were away, we actually switched out a guest on you. So let me introduce another person to our program, Caroline Mitchell. Caroline, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and Caroline is also a city employee here. And this group of people um, have been working on a really cool project that we thought you'd be interested in. It's called an integrated recycling facility. Um, uh, quite a mouthful. Susie, tell us a little bit about what that means. Well, we were asked by the council to look at what the next levels of recycling uh, represented in Fort Collins. In other words, we do a really good job with our curbside materials, but there are a lot of other materials that are, people are interested in. And what would it take to, to put together the kind of facility that would accept some of these hard to recycle materials? Uh, we worked on a feasibility uh, project with some consulting um, folks and came up with the idea that it, uh, we would create a new drop-off site that would accept not only the conventional materials that we currently collect at our recycling drop-off facility, but also um, wood waste and metal waste and um, rubble such as asphalt and concrete, just a lot of the stuff that's sitting around that you, you know, trying to clean up your yard or you're, um, right. you've done a project or something and you've got all this stuff that's kind of all piled up and needs to, to be recycled. So we've come up with this proposal for council and they, we took it to them uh, back in March and they said, well, you know, tell us more. Right. So we, we uh, have kept on working on this. It's a really cool idea. It's almost, um, like you said, it's the next level of recycling. And I think even um, Justin touched on it. This is a community that has always said, yep, we recycle. We have curbside recycling. I think people are really bought into the idea. And yet we have this um, recycling goal that we're, we're not there yet, right? Uh, what is our goal? Someone tell, I want to say it's 50% diversion. Is that right, Caroline? You're nodding at me, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> it is. I'm the number collector. That's so oh, I, good. <laughs> um, I'm familiar with their numbers, but uh, this, the city of Fort Collins has a goal of um, diverting, and that's sometimes kind of the jargony way of saying recycling or composting 50% of the material that's disposed of for the community. So we haven't released the 2011 number at this point. We're still gathering data, but for 2010, the community uh, recycled and composted 43%. Oh, close. So we're getting close, right. but at the same time, making progress in the community's diversion rate requires more services. It re requires action, really. Right. It's not just going to happen on its own accord. Right. So that's what was the, um, the impetus behind looking more into what a, an integrated recycling facility might look like for the city of Fort Collins. And essentially, it's... Um, the opportunity to bring more than what we currently have. So some of the items, Erin, that we were talking about for the Household Hazardous Waste Collection event, you'd be able to bring those to this facility as well. Is that true? Well, in the conceptual phase, I know sure. they're considering um, what we call ABOT materials. It's antifreeze, batteries, oil, and paint. Those are, um, as Caroline said, high volume and low toxicity. Very easy to dispose of, um, not as many regulatory constraints around as disposing of them, and very common. And so right. those, and then also e-waste, which um, average home they'll say has maybe four computers in it, two of which you don't use. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy. And so, I would, you know, 
guffaw at that number <laughs> if I didn't know better in my own home. So it would be an opportunity for residents to take those outdated electronics. As we know, they get updated, you know, technology changes so fast, it's important to stay up on it, but it'd give an avenue for residents to properly dispose of it to keep those metals and toxics out in the landfill. And, you know, interestingly enough, Kim, Governor Hickenlooper just signed a bill um, last week that prohibits the disposal of electronic waste in any landfills in Colorado now. Wow. Now, you know, that's going to create uh, uh, quite a lot of demand for the recycling services. And so I think that, you know, if the city does decide to go ahead with an integrated recycling facility, it's going to you know, be very timely for this you know yeah. Yeah. E waste issue true now um, the city of Fort Collins has some e-waste regulations we're the only city in um, the state of Colorado currently that has a local ordinance that prohibits e-waste from being disposed of in the landfill but Gov governor Hickenlooper signed a statewide ban okay so it'll prevent um, all they communities. were they were just copying us yeah <laughs> 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 sort of. so that makes a lot of sense though because e-waste and some of the other items that you've mentioned really do have sort of these hidden impacts, right? People don't necessarily think about when you throw an old cell phone or a, an old... Uh, Correct. Electronics have quite a um, large amount of metals, um, a lot of mercury, lead, cadmium, um, what they call the heavy metals. The ones that really are harmful to the environment are persistent in the environment right. and um, also have a lot of health effects. So in addition to, to looking at the toxics sort of that where Aaron's describing, the other purpose of an integrated recycling facility is to address just the glut of materials that goes into the landfill, which is, you know, very low grade, low value materials like um, wood waste and, and, you know, So wood waste junk like that, uh, branches? Branches and, and old lumber and oh. bits and, you know. Pallets. Um, pallets. Um, oh. And it's, it's just sort of not very convenient to get rid of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's not. And, um, you know, there are a, a, a list of, of places in Fort Collins, and we, we try to keep an updated list and all the contact information so that citizen, citizens who wish to, you know, really go out and track down these locations can go out and, you know, and, and do some pretty serious recycling. But we recognize, again, this is the issue of convenience. Is it really what people want is to just be able to take, take it to one place, you know, right. not Load spend a whole Saturday down. morning, you know, going to five different places. It makes a lot of sense. So, you know, Caroline, where are we in this process? We said, we have this goal, we have some ideas as to improve services to help reach that goal, um, so now what? Yeah, so the um, there were actually two different studies done last year um, that tie into the integrated recycling facility. One of them was really looking at our waste stream and of those materials, of that 50% of the material that's still going to the landfill, what is it really composed of? Right. And that fed directly into the study for the integrated recycling facility saying, okay, so now looking at those materials, what sort of facility would be needed here in Fort Collins? Um, and really the, the targeted customer for that is kind of the self hauler to the landfill um, is kind of the, the goal of the integrated recycling facility project would be not to um, collect recyclables that are already getting diverted in one right. way or another is to collect material that would already be going to the landfill and kind of make a one-stop shop that's just as easy as the landfill for dropping off your materials. Right. Um, so as far as the process that goes, uh, these studies have been finished up and um, they've been pre presented to City Council in a study session. And now the concept is going through the city's budgeting process to determine whether Right. It's a priority to fund and yeah. to move forward with. So have we looked at locations? Is it too early for that? Have we decided well, you know, where that, would be a good spot for that, this? That's a really great question. That was part of what we asked the consultants to do because the, the right type of location for an integrated recycling facility is going to have to be industrially zoned. It's going to have to be convenient right. to, to as many people as possible in Fort Collins. They, they ended up looking at 23 locations oh, wow. in Fort Collins, shortlisting seven. And then out of that, there was one very clear winner for us. And that's because it's some property that we own on Timberline. And it's next to the substation. You know, there's that um, yes. Platte River Power Authority electric substation at the southwest corner of East Prospect and Timberline. Yes. And um, as you sort of head southbound on Timberline, you go up a little rise, a uh, little hill, and it's some property off to the right-hand side that's undeveloped. Okay. And um, we own the property. We think we might be able to lease it from the light and power utility. It gives us enough room to put in a phase one facility that could be expanded in the future if that turns out to be what the city likes. 
And I'd like to add one other thing you asked about the process. We actually go back to the council on June 26 with another element of these studies, which is looking at waste to energy. Um, right, so I was going to ask, you know, once, we, once we collect all this waste, how do we then, uh, you know, what's our process for disposing of that in a responsible way? Right. Well, there there is a sort of an, a growing uh, number of options for that material that you just aren't going to be able to recycle or right. compost that's still going to go into the landfill that has embedded energy in it. And would the appropriate thing for this community be, you know, do would be to would it would be, would it be to capture that material? Right. And and we think probably yes. It seems like a very responsible thing to do. It's probably going to be a small amount, and we'll probably end up doing something that looks like a demonstration project, okay. just to sort of be able to to see is you know what is the potential and and what's the best uh, approach to use. But it's really fascinating that we're heading. So what down a cool idea! Way. So essentially, it's um, you collect some stuff. A small percentage of that might be processed, I don't know exactly how it happens, but then turned into energy and, and given back to the grid at Fort Collins. However, but we're talking about, in some senses, different materials. The, the integrated recycling facility and the waste to energy projects could be related, but are also okay. fairly distinct projects. So the vast majority of the materials that the integrated recycling facility is focusing on um, already have a recycling market here locally. Great. So the kind of the process that would happen for the vast majority of the materials at the integrated recycling facility would be that someone comes in, they drop off their materials, they probably bring in their mixed load of all sorts of stuff mixed right. together. We help sort it out. And then those separated materials go to local recyclers. For instance, all the um, concrete and brick and aggregate materials can go to the city's Hoffman Mill Road site right. and be ground up. Mm -hmm. So materials like that that already have a recycling home would continue to be recycled. Um, a, a waste to energy facility, depending on what sort of facility it would be, um, then you would talk about what sort of feedstock made sense for that sort of facility. But it's not something you would want to be harnessing. You wouldn't want to be taking materials that could otherwise be recycled and using them for energy because it's a higher and better use to get more use out of those materials before they'd be converted. It's really good but point. it's kind of the end of the line. If yeah. you've got something right. that, that doesn't have, yeah. it, so that's a really good point. And what I guess I want to make sure is that what we're talking about is something that's, it's still very much of a hypothetical kind of project. It just happens that if we would develop an earth, that it would sort of give us more earth. latitude. Oh, earth, sorry. integrated it's, recycling facility. That, oh, sorry, <laughs> I kind of like it. It's, it's, um, I was thinking ALF, remember the, OK, anyway. <laughs> so if, if we didn't, an, an we might have to have a contest to, facility to, to get a better. I know it's like a swear jar. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you do an acronym. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it would just give us more latitude, I think, for, for trying to explore some of these new ideas. So that, for instance, if we were collecting something like e-waste, uh, why wouldn't we also maybe consider collecting something like um, uh, children's car seats? That was something one of our council people mentioned. Oh. Is that they, you know, you don't want them to be continue to be used because they're, they're they've they, reached the yeah. end of their serviceable life but they're hard to recycle yeah. uh, yet there is a way to do it mm -hmm. it's just that we you know would you know have to take a little extra time and trouble to figure out where to send it so right. that's i think that's what this opportunity um, presents for us is a, a chance to to get more creative and um and perhaps more aggressive even about recycling mm -hmm. yeah. materials it's a really cool idea and it will be interesting to see where it winds up and if it's um, short term or long term or um, yeah, I'm excited to, to hear more about it. So if, if people are really excited about this, they want to learn more, is there a place where we have some those studies posted or where they can sort of read through the nitty gritty? Yep. FCGov.com slash recycling is kind of the homepage for all things recycling related to the city. And those reports are listed in a, um, in a link on the right hand side of the page, oddly enough, list called reports. <laughs> ah, <laughs> intuitive. I like it. So again, fcgov.com slash recycling if you want to learn more about the ideas and the concepts behind this project. And um, I have a sneaking suspicion we might have this group back on and hear more about uh, where it is in a year or so. I, I think we genuinely want to hear from people what they think because, you know, um, as we do it, go forward, it continue to take baby steps in developing sure. this, we'd love feedback on it. Yeah. Um, you know, what do people think? Uh, maybe we should do some a, a little focusing, you know, our outreach to people who, who uh, might have specific questions or maybe some uh, general open houses. But, we'd, you know, we're really curious if people think the time is right, right. Um, for us to sort of graduate to the next level of, of hard to recycle materials and and um, 
Um, I think just kind of one of the other overall um, summary benefits of the integrated recycling facility is it really provides kind of a, a base that Fort Collins can grow from. There are a number of materials that are appropriate to be accepted at the integrated recycling facility currently, but having a facility like that and um, the consultants that had drawn out the idea for the integrated recycling facility designed what growth for that facility might look like. Mm. But it also just gives us an opportunity, as Susie was mentioning, car seats or as other materials inevitably will become recyclable. Right. Um, a lot of those materials, they're not going to be materials that you'll put in your curbside bin. That sort of recycling is kind of capped out. But the, the additional opportunities for recycling will need to take place at a facility like an integrated recycling facility. So. There's a list of materials that make sense to recycle now, but if it's a step that the City of Fort Collins wants to take, it would also provide opportunities for growth in the future. Well, that's a good place to end. I wanna thank you all for being here. Caroline, thank you, Aaron and Susie. And I have to say, I forgot to thank Justin before he left, but um, I really appreciate you all being here. I learned a lot today, so thank you. It was really fun, thanks. Thank you. Great, and thank you all for watching. This has been Studio 14. I'm Kim Newcomer with the City of Fort Collins, and I'll see you next time.